Podcast where we take a look at the franchises, they make you go, they made how many of those? And each and every sequel gets a fair trial. My name is Justin Camps, and I'm here with Elizabeth Helley and <laughs> Tyler Hymanson. <laughs> is, that, is that you, McLeod? <laughs> it's me. <laughs> what can I pour you? Some drink I've never heard of? Sure, Tony. <laughs> go for it. Can you wave at me weekly from across the opera? <laughs> sure. Oh, guys, you know what? We're here talking about Highlander 2, the quickening. Welcome. <laughs> and we have a special guest with us returning uh, from, you know, his roadhouse days. Oh, my God. <laughs> I forgot what I was. Josh Briggs. <laughs> ah. I mean. Welcome back, Josh. Thank you for having me. I can't get that raspy. I wish I could have gotten yeah, that. Yeah, I know. Hi, hey, Joe. That's not that I'm oh, getting. That's pretty good. I'm getting close. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, if you guys happen to have watched this film, you know right away what we're, what we're doing. Uh, but, uh, but chances are you haven't. <laughs> Before we, yeah, that's right. Before we get to that, we just have a little bit of uh, housekeeping here. Um, I just wanted to say, uh, you know, thanks again to Jonathan Melville for being on our episode last week about Highlander. It was actually so great that we were able to have him because it was, I really enjoyed hearing, um, you know, someone who is so excited about the film, the original film Highlander. Um, and it was just fun to hear him, like, clear his clear love for the movie. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, you know, we it was great to have that perspective because we were kind of, a, you know, we had just seen it for the first time, most yeah. of us. And, and we were kind of, you know, a little bit harder on the film. Um, but so, yeah, it was, it was great to have him. So thank you, Jonathan, for being here. And if you missed that episode, uh, go back and listen to it. Guess what? It's still out there. It's out there on Apple Podcasts. You can listen to it and you can rate it five stars. That's for a right. limited time. No. <laughs> for, a limited time. <laughs> for an unlimited time only. <laughs> also unlimited is emails. They're free. Send them to us at SequelRights at gmail.com or you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at SequelRights. All right. Uh, well, should we get into this uh, the sequel, Highlander 2, The Quickening? Are you guys ready? No. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if we're ready, but uh, here we go. Greetings, Highlander. In all their centuries on Earth, nothing could have prepared them for the quickening. Christopher Lambert, Sean Connery, Highlander 2, The Quickening. Hey, I thought it was Lambert. Lambert. <laughs> I know. It's Lambert, right? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't His know. production company is Lambert. Well, that's cute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, this movie is from the producers of people who saw Blade Runner and also Tim Burton's Batman. Exactly. <laughs> Did you see Dark Man? No, no. Okay, well, you can watch this anyway. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, we are about to talk about um, what some people have called the worst film of all time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Highlander 2, The Quickening. That's right. 1991. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can I say a couple things about this trailer? Because oh, I hadn't yeah. listened, I hadn't watched it. I certainly hadn't listened to it. <laughs> no. It's a great listen. Because it's just like uh, <laughs> pew, blunt pow. force. <laughs> blunt force trauma. And uh, that's from the movie Rocky. Uh, Rocky Balboa. And uh, that, like, 
it is first of all i watch this movie with subtitles on i've had this thing lately i've been watching a lot of 90s and 80s action movies a lot of the canon films uh canon Mm -hmm. and it's and they all clock in about 140 minutes and they all have guitar solos that start the movies off (laughs) it's been great watching them with uh i watched this movie with closed captions on too because i just had it rolling and it does just say things like rock music <laughs> and you're like that's that's probably what it was on the page right like that was like exactly as written it's just rock music comes through in the trailer so you know just what you're getting in for the only thing is like in all their centuries on earth they prepare for the quickening did the quickening not happen in the first it Highlander? It happened multiple times. Yeah. Like the first Highlander. The, 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 Less than 100 years ago <laughs> yeah. in this timeline. And it did not happen. Did it happen in no. Highlander 2, the quickening? Uh, kind of. Technically, I think any time it's getting close to 1, then you're yeah, having I a think, quickening. I think so, yeah. But they just weren't ready for it this time. <laughs> it was an accident. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, fuck. Was that the oh, quickening? Oh, fuck. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, it's like the first it's 20, April already? 20, 30 minutes of this film before you could figure out, like, did they just reboot it with no, like, with complete Ooh, abandon? Right. But then you get, like, the explanation, and I should have written down the quote, but she basically is like, so these guys do this thing, oh. and you come here, and this and that, and blah, blah, blah. Like, it was such <laughs> oh, a good quote. Man. And Christopher Lambert keeps yeah. being <laughs> super fucking coy through that whole thing. Yeah. Anytime yeah. anyone tries to get him to explain it, he goes, well, it could be it. <laughs> he goes, well, maybe. It's mm. something like that. It's, yeah, it's He's coy until he de-ages, becomes a young man, and then just has sex in an alley with oh. a random woman. Oh, my God. <laughs> terrible. Terrible. And um, that romantic music while it's happening. Yeah. Like, you've been the waiting same, for this all seven yeah, minutes yeah. of this movie. The same theme song he had with his last two wives. I know, yeah. yeah. He's just like, on to the next. Yeah, I was like, was is uh, Sean Connery going to walk up on them right now, too? Because it's just like, oh, if he's fornicating, Sean Connery is not that yeah. far away. Well, yeah, I mean, he kind of, like, ejaculates him out of a <laughs> lightning bolt <laughs> in one of the scenes. He really Sean, does. Sean Connery just walks up and just puts a <laughs> porno mag under his arms. <laughs> Oh, sorry to bother you. <laughs> Don't mind if I watch. <laughs> That's a pretty good. That's a pretty good Sean Connery. Thanks. I'm going to work on it. Yeah. Let me stretching uh, it out. So, yes, this movie, uh, the producers have also seen Dune and Star Wars. Yeah. It's- and they decide that, oh, space is in. <laughs> so this is a flashback to a different planet well okay there's uh, we should probably talk immediately about the multiple cuts we need a framing (laughs) device oh Oh, the cuts let's talk about multiple cuts in the movie so uh this movie was a famously troubled production yes it's shot in argentina i watched the uh special features and and, like in the middle of a coup uh, uh, yeah in the middle of a coup right and well they were at war with britain and Uh uh, there was like hyperinflation going on and all this shit so uh they were spending lots of money and like this movie had a budget of three billion dollars. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Well, apparently they paid uh, Sean Connery three million dollars for six days of shooting. Uh, wow! In 1991, yeah. Pretty Good for Sean. That's, nice. yeah. that's probably why they had him land in Scotland because they were like, well, then I guess we, like he won't have to travel. We could just film him like in his own neighborhood going to a suit shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so like three weeks away from the end of the shooting, the bonding company like took the film away from them mm-hmm. and basically finished it themselves. So it came out in this like really terrible, mm-hmm. uh, the theatrical version was this terrible version of the movie that was awful. And that's why everyone's like, the movie's so fucking terrible. Um, but eventually the director did like a second cut called the Renegade version. And then I believe that this version that we watched is like um, this version from 2004 where they added okay. in new special effects. So we're seeing like the best version of the, the Renegade remaster. This is the best version. This is the best, best version. version. Yeah, we didn't know until the end that in the credits that we were watching the 2004 oh, version. Yeah. Ours was also cut with repeated commercials for Mike Bloomberg and Tom <laughs> Steyer. Oh, oh, nice. You watch on Tubi <laughs> TV. Oh, no. Yeah. So, like, we saw that commercial so many times, I'm pretty sure we're both voting we're for, for Mike Tom- Bloomberg. Right, now. I watched <laughs> mine on Tubi as well. Yeah. On my phone, though, it was just uh, that's the one with the people skiing all the time. Do you get that one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the yeah, Blues yeah, Rock yeah, song? Yeah, yeah. I don't even know what it's for. I never, I just, like, tune out. It must be a different zip code because ours... Every commercial was Mike Bloomberg or Tom Steyer. Every single it was, it was like, oh, there's a shield over the planet. It's like, well, Mike Bloomberg is going to do something about this. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, well, in the original version of the film, the shield was red, and there was, like, shitty special well, effects. And this scenes. movie is very blue. Yeah. 
It did look good. I thought the shield looked good. It did. Okay, so that makes sense yeah, that it was so redone up, yeah, 15 yeah, years ago. Yeah, they updated that, yeah. But so in the original version of the movie, um, they all come from a different planet called oh. Planet Zeist. Okay. Um, but in this updated version of the film, they have cut out all references, and it's just supposed to be a a, a different like time Dimension in the past. Dimension or something? No, it's just supposed to be lo- random time in the past. Just so far, and almost like uh, like we hear like Atlantis maybe existed right. millennia exactly. before any. It's supposed to be like a long time in the past, even though none of that makes sense because they have weird technology and guns and stuff. Sure, and also like uh, yeah. Jesus must have already happened like by the time this happens because they have the rule about not fighting on holy ground, and but so it seems sure. like any holy oh, ground. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's what it's right. true. I don't know. It's always in a Christian church. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I guess in the, this maybe version Jesus of the movie, was a Highlander. <laughs> maybe, you know what? That is highly like, no, likely. This is the Viper Room. This is Holy Ground. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also, um, Sean Connery does um, mention Noah's flood at one point, and we were That's like, it was, "Isn't it Noah's Ark, <laughs> not Noah's <laughs> flood?" Yeah, no, 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 Noah did the flood. <laughs> <laughs> that was his. He plugged the toilet up, yeah. and it flooded. <laughs> <laughs> Noah's flood. I'm not sorry about this. <laughs> But, that, was, uh, that was the key thing about Noah. He wasn't sorry. Yeah, never. <laughs> never once. It's probably true. Yeah, the, the movie starts off with uh, McLeod at yet another uh, entertainment event that I don't think he really cares about being at. <laughs> <laughs> we we at join opera. him at the opera. He's at an asleep. opera. Where, so the, this movie starts with, with basically, here's some exposition of, hey, the sun's radiation got too hot. And so they put up a shield. Uh, nobody knows if we need the shield anymore. It's 2024. It's like, it's like yeah. some people think the shield isn't needed, <laughs> but no one knows for sure. sure. And there's it's nothing, like literally what it says. There's nothing more 90s than the fact that it's an it's about ozone radiation. It's ultraviolet radiation because yeah. there's no ozone layer. Right. Like the, the depletion of the ozone. Nothing more 1991 yes. <laughs> in environmental yeah. science. The shield goes up in 99, and the movie takes place in 2024. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's too late for us, really, yeah. in this world. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know. And it opens on a leaky opera house. <laughs> yeah, All these rich people cannot fix the holes in this <laughs> roof, even though everything else is fine. This is like to your point about Blade Runner. Yeah. They're just like, rain inside buildings? <laughs> yeah. Sure, sure. They're just tarps. They just put out some tarps yeah to cover up see that like the argentinian government was so mad that they made their prized opera house look so shitty that there's an entire like one paragraph disclaimer in the credits that like the vision of the colon opera house does not represent (laughs) what it actually looks like it was made to look this way due to the very specific parameters of the film and it does not represent the opera at all wow (laughs) they were not thrilled by it no (laughs) Well, it is kind of weird. They don't fully ever explain like what went wrong with the shield being up that long. No, than- but it was but it was enough to to <laughs> turn uh, his girlfriend from the first movie into an irradiated zombie. Well, that's before the shield. <laughs> yeah, yeah the shield that wasn't because of the shield. <laughs> it wasn't because they couldn't get the actress back. So they're like, put put a bunch of bandages and a red wig on her. Like that'll make sense. And she's like, the sun's killing us. <laughs> <laughs> Help me. And then she dies right there in and Ozone she, Ward <laughs> East Sea or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then there was this crazy shot where I was like, holy shit, they set up all these fucking beds? <laughs> the, the camera like pulls away and oh, it's yeah. like hundreds of beds in this no, warehouse. Dude, it's like this, a Gone with the Wind level yeah. shot. <laughs> yes, yeah, the most this expensive movie, scene in the movie. It's like we're about to go into the Dunkirk scene of Atonement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this movie cost $30 million. Like they spent money. Yeah, for sure. And it does seem like it's also a movie that like has zero, regardless of the edit. Well, because I guess is this is the movie they intended to make now. <laughs> yeah. That like it has no idea who its audience is to begin with, which I always find it dubious. Anytime a director says like, "Oh, they fucked up my movie," <laughs> right, right. Like, these fat cats, <laughs> and, and like that. As if, like, oh, someone's, I mean, the guy directed the most recent Fantastic Four. I remember oh, him yeah. saying that. Oh, like, yeah. oh there's, a, there's a good movie out there. They just don't want you to see, see it. Yeah, no, yeah. It's just, hey. Release the Snyder Cut. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we left all the good explainy parts. On the <laughs> yeah. and this, is, uh, this is one of those, this is one of those movies that, like, has no idea who its audience is. Like, you're looking at this. 
they clearly wanted to make action figures, right? Like that's yeah. you got the guys on the skateboards and yeah. the twins. Oh yeah, the porcupine, <laughs> the, 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 the like yeah. Power Rangers yeah. villains, or whatever. Yes, yeah. exactly. Uh, also, the prototypes for the, the white guys with dreads in one of the Matrix. Yes, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but like, and then he's a hey. There's a, a rape that we should not drive past is just was, as quickly as McCloud oh did. My God. Uh, yeah. That was in like the weird. first three minutes of this movie, like yeah. it's a Death Wish movie. Yeah, and it, then you've got a, and then like. Yeah, and then he's immediately having consensual sex, pre- presumably, presumably, in this alley to romantic music within like the first ten minutes. It's very upsetting, and but like it is weird that you know, like there was probably a lot of meetings about making like a Burger King version of like yeah. Highlander right. two action figures. And then it's like, yeah, there's certain parts of the film where it's like, is this supposed to be like a buddy action comedy? Yeah, yeah. or a comedy in general? I don't know. There's and some that, strange scenes with Sean Connery that are like, huh? make oh, he no sense. sense. <laughs> Don't you think is uh, it's all thing about airplane food? His oh, bit yeah. about airplane food, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Oh god! And the uh, the like uh, suit making montage to the William Tell overture. Oh boy. Let's not forget that Juan Santos via Lobos Ramirez is supposed to be He's Spanish, yeah. Egyptian, but for some oh Egyptian Spanish, Spanish who reappears in Scotland during Hamlet on the stage, yeah. and then walks around Scotland to get new clothes, and then flies to New York or wherever they are, yeah, yeah. where he's stalked by bagpipes the entire <laughs> film. Yeah. In a he flies there in a prop plane. In a it's prop not even plane. a jet. Yeah. That, why is that not? Ex- that's that's retro futurism. Yeah, mm. I think so. Yeah. At its finest, yeah. <laughs> they like the opera and they like propellers. Yeah. I mean, his character is like you know some guy who studies abroad in Australia for a semester and comes back with an accent. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> in Scotland, he's like, "I'm Scottish now. Bagpipes are my theme song, and I'm going to wear this outfit all like, the time. Even when you I die, kill, got one. Yeah. <laughs> so even weird. when I die, we're playing bagpipes to remember me. Yeah." yeah. Oh, God. But then he still makes references to being Spanish yeah. throughout the movie. He says his name again the entire yeah. way through. And Santos. he was like, he's the metallurgist to oh, Ferdinand. Yeah. King of Spain yeah. or whatever. Yeah. That is, and also, that's how he is summoned. His, his name must be said. <laughs> it's the key, yeah. lest we forget. Yeah, and he basically just goes, oh, good, magic works, is his like explanation for why he's alive. Now. That was fucking weird. So we should talk. Uh, so the movie lays out some crazy new rules about mm-hmm. what is going on with the Highlander situation. Start the clock. Tell us these new rules. So, here's what's happened. <laughs> Ramirez and Connor McLeod have been transported to the future. Their whole thing is like, there can be only one, and once you get to be the last one, there's no more mind-reading bullshit. It's like, right. now you have a all choice. Those, all those demons <laughs> that you saw... It didn't happen. Doesn't, doesn't, matter. doesn't matter. Now when you're the last one, you have a choice. You can either A, grow old and die, yeah. or B, come back to the past and be immortal again, I guess. It's not really clear. So yeah, I mean, you can go back to that world and be immortal, but you got to submit to the general or whatever, right. yeah. And the world well, technically is Earth, according to this version. Of right. <laughs> like, it does seem weird that you'd be the last one. Your choice would be, like, I'll go back alone start over and start over <laughs> unless it is another planet right which is a cool idea oh yeah yes there's a lot of potentially <laughs> really <laughs> cool this is rife for yeah. a remake oh, like a, yeah. a a hard reset on the entire highlight i actually agree of like of series. all these remakes of movies that are actually good like this is a, this is a, a series that, that, that could actually well, yeah. a remake yeah and one thing that Jonathan talks about in the interview was that apparently there was rumors that the John Wick people are going to remake Highlander with actual good fighting and like that would be incredible. That'd be awesome. So yeah, I would uh, love that. Who's Jonathan? Oh, the guy that we interviewed last <laughs> week. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Jonathan Wick. That would be great. <laughs> yeah, <John Wick. laughs> please. That was my father's name. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I guess the movie starts with Connor McCloud old. Which old, is where the old man voice comes. Connor McCold, yeah. Can we get one more beat of that? He's like, there's there's this amazing scene where uh, he's watching the, the, the news, and they're talking about oh, yeah. this uh, terrorist. Uh, Virginia Madsen. Cobalt. Virginia Madsen. Her, is Cobalt is on the loose. And they're showing like a photo of her <laughs> on the channel, and he cuts away to Connor McCloud going, pretty girl. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty girl. 
It's just like if you had all the perspective of living for centuries and you could read all, like, the minds of all humans, you still are like, I got a bone. Yeah. Like, where is a hot, like, strawberry blonde girl, like, for me to, it's you know. It's going to be my new well, wife. He, he drove right past one. <laughs> That's oh, true. Oh, boy. There's, yeah, this movie, there's, oh, God. So I guess he's like still in the middle of deciding if he wants to be old or go back. No, I, I don't even know. Decided I don't even know if he remembers. Oh, okay. Like because yeah. he accidentally kills one of them and then he gets quickened oh, and, he, and, he, and he's like, no, not <laughs> yeah. again. No. <laughs> yeah, and he doesn't. I guess he doesn't want it. And then and then the entire town blows up. Oh my god! Okay, wait, wait, wait. Can we talk? Uh, there, there's one <laughs> there's thing. So many. Wait, wait, wait. There, I know. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm there's one you guys thing really... uh, that I want to talk about because I had made a clip of it, and it's like <sighs> my favorite moment in the film. Um, but there was this opening, like you know, James Bond <laughs> damn raid <laughs> sequence, yeah. uh, where they set up like Virginia Madsen as this like badass, like yeah, she's breaking into this secret shield fortress and she's getting the data, and then like yeah, five minutes later she's like, I love you, kind of <laughs> <club>. <laughs> oops, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go heal, bro. <laughs> Anytime you see a bank of computers, all Asian people. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> There's God. even someone credited as. Oriental technician. Oh no! Whose name is Helen Buck, and they are definitely from Scotland. <laughs> oh so. yikes! Like, yikes! Um, but this this whole scene is like it starts with a bunch of shots of the guards, and it and contains my favorite conversation beat in the entire film. Ooh. I'm just gonna play it right now mm-hmm. here for you guys. Here it comes. What was that? What was what? I heard something. I'm calling it in. Security. I heard something. You see anything? I don't see nothing. Could be fish. Fish live in the lake. Not in this lake. Yeah, well, I've seen them. It was a fish. (laughs) Fish live in the lake. (laughs) Oh, yeah, well, I saw it. It was a a fish. (laughs) End scene. (laughs) Perfect. (laughs) And then it's like a bunch of people, like, ziplining. A bunch of people ziplining right behind them. (laughs) The best part about this raid is that the climax of this movie takes place at the very same dam, and they just reuse the footage. (laughs) Jesus Christ. (laughs) uh, I think you talked about this on your last episode. The show is like the... So some of the reads of some of these lines are just... Like, this could have been... Funny. Like, show that one of these guys doesn't give a shit about his job. He's just like... You know, just fish, you know. Yeah, he's just all he wants to do is eat his club sandwich he brought from home. He's just like, that's all he wants. Just don't bother me, not tonight. You know, he's trying to watch his little portable TV or something. There's none of that. Just two guys going, it's a fish. (laughs) Huh? It's a fish. I saw it. it's (laughs) It's a fish. Fish live in the lake. I mean, it sounds like yeah. they wrote the lines down, showed it to a random dude for the first time, and recorded it right there. Yeah. Ergo, <laughs> fish. Yeah. Maybe these are all like Argentinian uh, background actors, and they're yeah. doing it phonetically. Oh, just Maybe. doing like, American accents. <laughs> yeah, fish live in the lake. Fish. <laughs> uh, man, okay, but it, yeah. So this all leads to the the first major action set piece. Right. Uh, well, Do you want to talk about something before that? Well, no. I was going to say that that she finds out that there's maybe. This, she finds out the exact same thing that the opening text told us. That yeah. Maybe it's safe outside. And that they tell you again later because no one believes the lady. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> we should say that. But uh, why should they? What proof is there? I know. <laughs> you can't t- you can't see past the show. Uh, there's so much in this movie. <laughs> uh, we should say now is a good time, too, to talk about Michael Ironside. Yeah. He's the big bad in this movie, General sure. Katana. General Katana. Which, does he even use a katana? I don't no. Know. He's got one of those Conor 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 sword. Conor fights him with it. That's true. This is a yellow face. Prefer- no. <laughs> <laughs> he just has a, a Japanese name for some reason. Well, he, yeah. he is as Japanese as Ramirez. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. he's, uh, he, he's probably got like, uh, I love that. It's a G.I. Joe name for one thing. Yeah. General <laughs> Katana. Katana. It, there's one. Am I wrong? I feel like there's this moment. I was going to try to like make a see if I could record it, but it was. I think somebody says like I don't know if they're talking to a different character to set this up, and they say Colonel Katana as if to talk about him, but they're talking. 
to someone with a lower <laughs> rank about something else? There's like a weird anyway. It's yeah. general, but I thought Colonel Katana with the uh, well, the Katanas are a strong military family. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, uh, it's probably as fun. It's yeah. just a bunch of nepotism, you know. And I was like, okay, uh, Michael Ironside is going to be the big bad here. Like he's got to be, you know. I'm sure he's going to take this a lot more seriously than Clancy Brown. No, yeah, he did not. Yeah. Instead, he was like, I'm going to do an impression of what Clancy Brown, Brown was did doing. last time. And in like, this movie, my sword can get a boner. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes. yeah. I mean, that is what was happening. Yeah, yeah. It exactly was so, was un- it was weirdly unclear to me. I was watching, it was just like, all of a sudden, this sword is appearing as if, like, it had, like, from the backseat of the cab. And yeah. like, who they, is this they, hiding? They use the real prop sword that goes in when you stab someone for, like, the <laughs> yeah. actual sword in the movie. Like, it's supposed to be badass. It's the same thing with, like, Clancy Brown. It's like, would it be good? Would the yeah. sword was even uh, like 10,000 pieces? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, he's the big bad, and he's stuck back in past talking with these like three mind talker dudes. I don't know what well, the fuck that they're was. Like the talking. minority report yeah. people or whatever. Yeah. And, yeah the precogs oh, yeah. of the other, of the pre time. Yeah. And, or like the, they're kind of like the the judges from Superman. Yeah. There's oh, a lot yes, of that. Yeah, too. Yeah, yes, yeah. they are. The council. They and don't speak except to tell them to shut the fuck up. Then they do speak. <laughs> yeah. and I mean, they shut speak the only up. through your mind. Or and whatever. in this world, Ramirez made Connor McLeod yeah. immortal yeah. with a magic glowing with a magic gold wedding ceremony. Yeah. <laughs> we are now as one. Together. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, so, anyways, he's that's in about the, it. Yeah, that's you true. maybe you could say he's like yes you. <laughs> um. Anyways, there's the uh, so uh, General Katana's all pissed off. Like he's watching uh he's watching like TV future TV in the past. I mean like right. Connor McCloud is still alive. What the fuck? And so he sends his uh um he sends his porcupine henchmen to go right. to the future to kill him. They really are. It'd be like if they did a Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. Yes. Then what they did the Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. Right. How can yes. we make these it's like the same people humans? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then we get a Marty McFly hoverboard sword fight, which Beautiful. I thought actually looked kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, the hoverboard yeah. itself yes. looked cool. And watching the special features, they they did. They said they did like ninety percent of that in camera. Yeah. Uh, so it's pretty impressive what they got, and it reminds me of. I know you haven't never seen it, but it reminds me of the like Jupiter ascending. Yeah. He's got the hover boots flying around and stuff um but this is obviously way before were that. you talking to me or were you talking to all talking of our to, all of our audience I was talking to everyone <laughs> yes i know no one's seen jupiter ascending <laughs> but it reminds me of that yeah <laughs> i've seen like three-fourths of it on a plane um <laughs> that's a good that's a good on you so so, so speaking of there, all the in-camera stuff uh there was a lot of injuries in this movie like oh, yeah. uh, uh to actors or like yeah characters? Michael, michael irons <laughs> <laughs> michael ironside uh, uh chipped his tooth uh christopher oh. La- lambert uh lost part of his finger uh in a sword fight mm-hmm. yeah it was uh so i believe the in-camera thing yeah it's crazy um so this fight scene there's a guy, one of the porcupine dudes has, like, a bat wing suit, and he's flying around the city. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And there's this amazing moment. Uh, first it's of all. like a it, falcon Yeah, thing. it looks a little goofy because mm. it's like they're flying in circles, and Connor's, like, waiting for him to fly around so he can hit him once with the sword. But there's an amazing moment where a random citizen on the street thinks it's a good idea to ask a guy who's flying around in a bat suit if he has a light for a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> and... In response, he just blows him up. <laughs> Which is supposed to be hilarious in this right. movie. It's right. so dark and really like insane. Like everything, yeah. nothing about it. I mean, it. I laughed because I was like, why is this happening? Yeah. So he's still old at this point. Yeah. And she's with him and he's like, get in this garbage dumpster bin. Like yeah. immediately, as soon as he sees like the bad guys. And she does it. Yeah. He's like, get in the garbage. <laughs> yeah. Where you belong. Okay. And she even he even takes the like crate that's holding it open. Out yeah. of it. That's the best part. He's like, no, inside the <laughs> By the way, I know you guys, I don't think you guys have seen it. Maybe you've seen, have you seen Cats? I haven't seen Cats. I don't know why. This whole set (laughs) is the set from Cats. (laughs) The coloring is the same. The big red, like, neon letters that say rap for some reason. And Cats (laughs) just says milk. And then, like, there was a big, um, 
they keep going by this sign that says like the Algiers Motel, which is like the motel from the Detroit incident. Yeah. It's like that's what it's famously mm. called. So I'm like, what are they trying to reference there or sure. whatever? But yeah, because um, this movie means something. It's important. Oh yeah, yeah. Totes. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's cats. Well, <laughs> it all leads up to this like actually fairly impressive like. Scene it's a dark they, man level explosion. Yeah, uh-huh. I was like, "Holy shit!" So basically, this oh, is when like, he kills the one guy, yeah, and yeah. everything explodes. Yeah, 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 yeah. and he gets it's, quickened. It's so nuts! Uh, like, so they apparently built this entire set like on a mm-hmm. like at a port uh, area in um, Argentina. So I guess they rigged like every single building with explosives and blew it up, and it looks nuts. Like, it looks really good. Like it fireworks does. are blowing out of every window. Yeah, the and, first guy he kills is this giant crazy explosion. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's a like a diesel truck with lips painted on it that blows up <laughs> in his face, and he emerges from the fire. The second guy he kills, eh, nothing happens. That, oh, well, okay. That's you what feel he goes, like it's because he was at, Ramirez! That's right. Do you think it's because he was at low power Maybe. when he when he kills the first one? So it's like he has to, it's completely like refilling his life meter, his immortality well, yeah, the meter. The first one brings him back to young person. Yeah. Right? Age. And the second guy, and maybe that, the second guy wasn't immortal. Maybe only the first guy was I mean, immortal. That moment when he walks out of the fire was like the one time where I was like, yes, this is how badass this movie should be. Yes. It's like a great moment where he walks out and he's yeah. young. And that is cool. Like, oh, why yeah, isn't the whole movie oh, no. like this? You know? Yeah, it should be awesome. It should be very cool. Instead, it's like goofy and like, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so yeah, so it's that hard happens. to talk about. It. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. <laughs> she she crawls out of the dumpster and then they they fornicate. Yeah, which I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, and it's not she like calls. remember <laughs> like the uh, let's fornicate. I'm, I'm I'm making air quotes right now. The tasteful like nipple licking and like all the foreplay of the last movie. Yeah. This time he's like he just rams his hand right up in there <laughs> like as soon as he can. Yeah, in this one there's re- no like, like easing into it. Keeps nope. his pants on the whole time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dry humping and Seriously. <laughs> I mean, she kind of doesn't even know if it's the same dude. And yet, <laughs> that is crazy. He was dude. old and then now he's young. Like, she doesn't know what's happening. And she's just like, I love you, I guess. And the, next scene, and the next scene is her just guessing what's happening. And you're absolutely right. He's just like, could be. Maybe. She spends <laughs> And she much nails right. it, right? Yeah. I mean, gets the closest anyone comes in this movie with like three she points at which people try to explain it. She pretty much nails it and he goes, I kind of want to read it. Yeah. Like, oh, great. Look it up. Uh, she, yeah, it's got to be on the IMDb, right? But yeah, like word for word, it's insane. Um. <laughs> she spends most of the movie just sitting in his apartment. Yeah, yeah. Like, like so, going through his shit. So my fa- my favorite detail in this apartment, uh, and spoiler, Elias and I watch this movie together. Yeah, and I have so no there, there's a, there's a there's a photo of of <laughs> his first wife, and we're like, there was not photography. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Like 1522. Yeah. 1522. I guess I thought it was a painting. No, but well, it, it like, looked like a photo of it. First. <laughs> and it was just like, I was like, do you think that he, like, at one point just saw a girl that kind of looked like her? And he's like, hold on. I want to stage a photo shoot. <laughs> yeah, he would have married that like, girl. You look like my dead wife. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's fornicate. <laughs> I found the. Uh, you, okay. Okay. Yeah. Luis Marcus, she goes like this. Okay, now let me see if I can get this straight. You come from another planet. Which you guys aren't going to read movie. this together? You can, uh, there's only one thing. I mean, you come from another planet, and you're mortal there, but you're immortal here until you kill all the guys from there who have come here, and then you're mortal here. Unless you go back there or some more guys from there come here, in which case you become mortal here again. That's what Immortal. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, yeah, immortal yeah. here again. Yeah, that's what uh, I mean, it was actually a great explanation, despite <laughs> yeah. the fact that it sounds like complete nonsense. <laughs> yeah. When she said well, it, I was but... like, okay. Because yeah. uh, we had said in the last huh? movie, like, what happens, you know, do more guys yeah. come? Where's the quickening or whatever? So we got our answer. It, it's also, un- I don't want to jump too far ahead, but it's unclear. And tell- maybe you guys know now, so I'll ask it now. Do Highlanders feel pain? Yeah. I don't, I think that they We do. talked about this last yeah. week. I think, I think they, they, do. they do. Okay. So but the bullet don't thing, see. I think they're That's actually what I want to know. Yeah. Yeah. getting shot 122 <laughs> a times plan. or whatever. <laughs> that was so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> All, right. All right, well, let's, let's okay, get well, to let's, let's get, get, let's later. Get to, well, there's so much Ramirez to talk about in that 30 back. seconds. Yeah, yeah, Ramirez gets, like I said, uh, he uh, appears out of a bolt of lightning in the middle yeah. of uh, a Shakespeare play. Yeah. Um, I kept thinking of that, like, 
uh, James Taylor song of You've Got a Friend because he's like, just call out my name and I'll appear, or whatever. Like, and that's how yeah. what exactly what happens. Well, it's like apparently the uh, so the reason this happened in the first place is like I guess overseas the movie was like super popular even though okay in the U S Fox was like fuck this movie like we're gonna yes. dump it or whatever um, and then so the uh, financiers for this movie were not happy with having Sean Connery just be like a cameo mm. so they're uh, okay. like you need to bring him back and be the full second lead in the movie. Uh, so that's why he is. Uh, that's why he's there, and that's why there's a sequence of him just getting a suit made for him. Yeah, yeah. There's like a makeover montage. Yeah, that was so <laughs> where the guy's like, "This will take three weeks." And then he gives him a pearl earring, and the guy's <laughs> like, like, "How about oh, this? Oh, for two hundred dollars, <laughs> anything." <laughs> I love the scene where he's walking through the streets and just dancing in front of the TVs. Like, what's this? A TV? Yeah. And then oh, yeah. even though there's been bagpipes, when they start this suit montage, the William Tell Overture comes in yeah. for some reason. But then it's like bagpipes mixed in yes. part way through. Like, yes. <laughs> his, his whole his whole fish out of water persona is also so bullshit in this. Where like yes. he on the one hand is like again he's just like. Uh, being like sarcastic, jokey man, yeah. he is talk. He's constantly, you know, he's hitting on the woman on who's sitting next the to him plane. on the plane. Yet he's also not fucking freaking out about the flight. He just asks, like, "How is this happening?" But like, he's just like, <laughs> but he talks like someone. He, the so through both movies, he talks and acts like someone of the period. I mean, this also same thing for Michael yeah. Ironsides. I don't even remember his actual, his care. Oh, G- general Katana. How could I forget? He made they, a bunch of like references. <laughs> to, like, current technology. Yeah. 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 And like sports too. Yeah. yeah. A lot of sport. Yeah. A lot of, yeah. It's a lot of like three strikes and you're out. It's like, whatever. There's, it is, uh, problematic. Uh, yes. In the classic sense. So can we talk about, can we talk about the airplane? Yeah, let's talk about the airplane. I just want to mention, I want to give a shout out to the airplane safety video. Oh, the oh, airplane safety video. Yeah. That's the best part of this movie. The best part so of this movie. Robo-cop. Oh, yeah, so RoboCop. So yeah. RoboCop. <laughs> This is another part where it's like, is this is this like an air, is this airplane, the movie? You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's watching this airplane safety video and it's like starting out totally normal. And as they explain like what you're supposed to do if the you lose cabin pressure, instead of just showing people reaching... You know, calmly. calmly, everyone's freaking the fuck <laughs> yeah, out. It's like showing what would actually happen. It's like, oh my god, yeah, this would do nothing. You yeah, would die. die. The plane would explode. And then it's, like, it's like, put over this, put the plastic smoke hood over your head and crawl on your hands and knees. Yeah. And it's even, unreal. So plastic shopping bag with a hose attached to it. And then like it ends with like a miniature version of the airplane oh crashing god. into. It, <laughs> yeah. oh, it shows it blow up, but yeah. then it's like enjoy the flight. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. Just so ridiculous. And then and then it just cuts right back to Sean Connery hitting on a random woman. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's it's like he's done having a panic attack and is <laughs> yeah. back to like, well, I'm pretty hot already. A woman <laughs> who, by the way, is already way too drunk to consent. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Correct. Who, who then orders water. Like, even that is kind of a weird thing. Like, then her order before he makes his, uh, like, pretty loose innuendo oh, is like, uh i'll eat anything yeah, yeah. it's like well, i want everything you know, yeah, exactly. uh, yeah i won't anything eat anything i can't identify and then he yeah. says like that's not technically true <laughs> yeah, what like, can you not identify yeah, exactly. you're like, like, yeah. you i'm still a virgin <laughs> <laughs> what's that yeah. i was married 12 times but never like, consummated <laughs> <laughs> uh, there it does seem like that, uh, then, but yeah, her order is a water. Like you would even yeah. just again, like the height in this situation, you would think you would have her like, I'll have another champagne or something like that. Or just <laughs> like, no, it's a water. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm good. <laughs> and, and like, they don't even offer him food and he makes the whole food go. Anyway, it's, I, I watched like three times. That was the only part I watched. Uh, he was like, I was watching some Seinfeld. I feel like there's some airplane jokes. And yeah, that's what I have totally. to do. Yeah. He's working on his five minutes. <laughs> Um, I'm going on Letterman for this. <laughs> the fucking slay. It's like along along the same lines as the airplane safety video. Uh, I would love to talk about my favorite sequence in the film: the train, the train. Yes. <laughs> shortly after, oh. shortly after Michael Ironside comes to the future, he ends up on you know. No, he, he lands oh, in a right, train. Yeah. 
he lands right in the train and he's like, where am I? And he's like fucking with all these people. And then he's just like, I want to drive this. <laughs> I bet you always wanted to drive one of these. I'm going to go drive it. Yeah, yeah. You think he's going to throw the kid out of the train, but he just is <laughs> yeah. like, no, I'll live your dreams. It's very much like <laughs> yeah. I thought he was Mr. Burns taking candy kid. from a baby. <laughs> yeah. I thought I mean, I'd I, celebrate. I, I, I guess he oh, does. Yes, that was easy. <laughs> I guess he does kill the kid. He kills Oh, everyone. he kills everybody on the he train. He kills a baby. He kills because, this Because scene. this is the future, this train. Well, first of all. The script reads, rock music plays. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And boy, does it. <laughs> this scene is so funny to me because like, I kept being like, all right, next scene. And it just keeps going and getting more and more insane <laughs> as to what's <laughs> happening. Also, the inciting incident is there's a guy who has like movie glasses Ooh, yes. on the train. Oh, yeah. And like, Tyler, this is what you <laughs> need. <laughs> that's true. And just one eye. I thought that's very yeah. smart. Because then if you want to be like, you yeah. know, yeah, if you wanted no, to watch Godzilla. I would buy that. I would buy it in two seconds. <laughs> and then immediately watch Godzilla. Yeah. 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 Google Monocle. Yeah. That's what you need. <laughs> Google Monocle. Uh, I, this man, okay, wait, hold <laughs> the on. Sequence this is so insane. So insane. Go ahead. Uh, so he, yeah, he hits like go fast. He puts it all the way throttle and up. Because this is a future train. Yeah. It, sort I, it of goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's a 1980s Subway. Argentinian train that has a digital speedometer. It starts at 40 or something and eventually works its way all the way up to like 500. <laughs> no, yeah. it goes to like 8. Oh, 8? Yeah. Oh my oh, god. Okay, yeah, it just keeps going. So, like the scene just the scene goes on for a really long time and I thought it was going to be done for the duration times. of the rock song. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That was be and done a rock times. song is 6 minutes long <laughs> easily. And he's like having the time of his life driving this train and it keeps cutting back to the people on the train <laughs> and like each time it cuts back they're further in distress. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to the point of ridiculous and then eventually they all turn to mannequins. And well, the train is going so <laughs> the tra- the tra- That's what happens when you go at 800. <laughs> so, so fast that it becomes like a problem that you would only run into in like sublight space travel, where like you're going so fast that people are just being smushed in the back of the train because the force of gravity is so much. Uh, that it is throwing them to the back and they're just piling up and then it it's like oh like that's kind of crazy and then it just starts getting crazy violent yeah. <laughs> like and people's this, like faces exploding yeah like that one the, like the practical effects yeah. like the dude's head exploding <laughs> it's like, and yeah. <laughs> Tyler and I had to stop the movie to get a picture of Claymation Man oh and my and then, god like, unreal we will like, be posting it it's yeah. cutting between Michael Ironside smiling like <laughs> <laughs> yeah and people going nuts in the back of the train <laughs> and <laughs> also people in the subway waiting for the train flying back when it goes past them. <laughs> oh, the, on the same shot three times. Yeah, they're like, oh my god. I, I love though that like it starts it again starts with like a baby dying essentially, yeah. right? Like, yeah. this, where like the stroller gets away from the mom before yeah. she can do anything about it and then all this happens. Yeah. yeah. Which and also like seems crazy. You would think minutes. again you'd be holding onto that stroller. <laughs> Everybody's trying to gut that stroller or something, but then just like, then all hell breaks loose or that's the last, that's kind of the stroller yeah, breaks the camel's back. It's just I'm, the first indication the train's moving faster than it should. I'm not sure I've seen a more genius, like in a uh, ramp up of insanity uh, ever. Well, I'm just, I was just like, and the movie, what is happening? And, the, and this, this culminates it's like a with, Breaking Bad season in six minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, why is this still going on? Then the train just kind of crashes out into the street, and it doesn't cause that much damage going 800 miles an hour. Yeah. And then he just gets in a cab and starts harassing a cabbie. <laughs> oh, the music business. You got to meet my sister. You got to meet my sister. That was so funny. Oh, shit, wild, man. You're crazy, bro. Yeah. I love crazy guys. You would love my sister. Like when he breaks the window, he's like, oh, crazy. Whoa. Oh, you got a boner sword. Yeah, like like the guy's I totally into it. I love boner sword. You like music? Oh, shit, man. That's wild. You're nuts. <laughs> this guy, can I say something, is also the, the comedy relief in... The movie American Ninja. <laughs> I only know this because, like I said, I've been watching a lot <laughs> of canon, of canon, canon. 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 Uh, and he is insane and super annoying and weird in that movie too. Man. But he's in it for the whole thing. <laughs> it is a great time. Well. Right, so this is when <laughs> well, Mike, right. when General Katana uh, meets up with John C. McGinley, I guess, and is like, oh, right, John C. McGinley 
wants to keep the shield. Wants to, is, is He's the director this, of Shield, is but in not this that movie, shield. and wants to keep the shield on. Lowercase. Yeah, yeah. Lowercase Shield <laughs> wants to keep the shield on. Shield control. Yeah. And uh, we are, we're, we can talk about a flashback where Christopher Lambert has the biggest pants in the world, and also <laughs> and also invents the shield. This he, could, this, he made the shield. Also, he made the shield with yeah. an old man. I and figured it out. <laughs> and the old man, uh, once he sees him young, is nonplussed by it. He's, He's like, like oh, you might, like, you're taking some different vitamins? Good for you, bro. That guy was like one foot in the grave, I think. <laughs> again, again, with like, uh, the, the coin is, he goes, do you get a facelift? He goes, eh, something like that. <laughs> Yeah, he's always uh, like, it's ma- let's call it man. What are you, like a Swiss guy trying to pretend to be American? No. <laughs> I was Something. like, this flash- my name is Johnny Cheeseburgers. <laughs> this flashback. I've always been here. <laughs> I was like, the, the flashback continues the trend of ridiculous transitions in this movie, uh, in the series so far. Yes. He's like, in the, in the present day future or whatever the fuck it is. And he picks up these old, like, goggles and he puts them on <laughs> and starts to turn. And the camera yeah. rotates around yeah. him. And then in the, fl- and then it, like, fades <laughs> to the flashback. And in the, in the flashback, he's also turning, like, <laughs> yeah. mm, and then, and he's, then he's in the Hudsucker proxy. Yeah. And he's wearing the world's largest pair of pants. Yeah, it's, like, supposedly 1999, but yeah. they all look like they're wearing, like, suits from Cuba in the 1960s. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, they're all, they're all dressed come- like John Hammond or, yeah. yeah. As to be fair, as someone who went to the prom in the year 2000, yeah. Zoot Suits came back. back. For one, yeah. You'd say Did there was a riot. Really <laughs> yeah. Zoot Suits. I, this is a weird Zoot. thing about... Zoot Suits. <laughs> oh, God. A, any futuristic... <laughs> You've got it. That was good. That was good. Uh, any futuristic movie has this major issue of like a weirdly myopic futuristic view where like they're always like cigarettes and newspapers <laughs> like no one could imagine that but like anything those ever going away but like a, yes a a like digital ozone layer is like you know they think of but never like better screen quality or like yeah. it, or again different pants it is just like, no, there's a, probably the thing we still wear. It's just yeah. these, but bigger. Yeah. Still have a glass ball tchotchke on your desk. Too. Yeah. yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> so uh, then we yeah, get to the, prints on the, wall. <laughs> the MacGuffin of this movie, an hour into it, where his friend gives him one piece of longitude uh, and then just like kind of runs out of steam and doesn't give him the other half. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> they, and like they don't have anything else to do. Like the scene just ends. Yeah, yeah. And like it's like oh, would they, don't you need the latitude? Nah. Nah. <laughs> well, no. One number's good for me. <laughs> I'm the Highlander. <laughs> I'm not great at maps. It's never been my thing. In America, we don't need them. <laughs> wow, that's a really good. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. <laughs> got your Lambert down. <laughs> it's just Seagal plus Van Damme. Damn. It's right there. <laughs> the other thing I kept waiting for to happen in this movie, like in the beginning of the movie, every, like everyone in the city is like, oh shit, that's McLeod. Like, oh fuck, it's McLeod. Yeah. And like there's even that one point where these punks like come up to try to like, uh, you know, rob him and he turns around and they're like, oh shit, are you McLeod? And then they get scared and run away. And I'm so I'm like thinking like, oh shit, did he like kill a bunch of people or something? <laughs> and like, no, apparently they're just afraid of this scientist who helped <laughs> <laughs> to Mr. build this shield. He's rich. Get out of here. Yeah, they never explained that like people Let's knew he was down. immortal or something. Yeah. <laughs> Don't take his money. <laughs> Also, how did he get involved in this? <laughs> well, he was supposed to use his powers to like garner world peace, I guess. but he used it just to get with uh, Brenda. And then when she died from the radiation, he used his powers to invent the shield. Which he used his mind reading up. powers to read the mind of a scientist. And then <laughs> the guy's like over there drawing <laughs> ozone shield on a piece of paper. I know ozone shield. <laughs> he stole the copyright of ozone, ozone shield and big pants. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, an ozone shield that only goes up high enough to Not cover even... most mountains. <laughs> yeah, exactly. By the way, the way that they like just, oh, just waves out like a picnic blanket. Yeah, we we talked already about the car shooting scene where oh, they have to like 
Uh, sneak into the base oh, by right. driving up in a car. The maximum security prison they, called the maximum the security prison called because, Max. Oh, wait. He's like, hit it, dude. Yes! <laughs> Rock music plays. <laughs> They get shot so many times. The car is complete Swiss cheese, and they're both completely dead. Yes, and then they, this is their plan. Yeah, that, they did it on purpose because yeah. they were going to sneak in this way. And they open the trunk, which somehow was bulletproof, <laughs> oh, unlike the my rest God. of the car. And she's completely fine. And she's For like, oh, I got kidnapped. <laughs> <laughs> and then, thank God in the future, there's still Southern doctors. Oh, <laughs> Hello, I'm Dr. Sonny Jackson, and I've uh, looked over your report. As near as I can tell, you have a few bruises and lacerations, but I think you'll be okay in a day or so. <laughs> I was like, they just got to introduce one more stupid accent. <laughs> Thank you so much. Literally, the, my last note, the only other thing I had to say about this movie was Dr. Sonny Jackson getting all the meat off that bone with the two lines yeah. he has, his foghorn, leghorn, southern accent. It's just like, he's the only person who read who read the script and made a choice. So yeah. props to him. But it is, uh, I was also, like, is he doing a bit? Like, like, what is this? When he dies? Oh, he's doing a bit. Yeah, why does he say Larry when he dies? I don't know. And the important thing to know, too, he is that die, I guess, yeah. thankfully, Wendy still exists, you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Huge yeah. Wendy's yeah. cup yeah. on the doctor's desk. <laughs> <laughs> Even though we have seen no brand whatsoever to this yeah, point. Demolition Man, this is not. That's yeah. right. <laughs> but that's right. Like, that probably was just like the Starbucks cup in Game oh, of Game Thrones. Yeah, it was just like an accidental. It had to have been, and it had to have been a scene that was shot in the United States, right? Because they didn't have Wendy's in Argentina. In 91, they might have. I have no really? Idea. Wendy's? It's in my rider. I always have Wendy's. With me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ship it in. Ship it in. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Sonny Jackson. Yeah, they're breaking into the prison because they only have half of the coordinates of where the shield is weak so that they could check because they built the shield. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. They built the shield and like there's a lot of like, it was good we built the shield, right? And it's like, yeah, it's good we built the shield. We did a good thing. We built the shield. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, I guess the ozone recovered on its own. And I would say, if you ask me... He gave him the coordinates of the same place they were already in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is true. It wasn't like, oh, shit, but it's in Russia. <laughs> yeah. like, the movie makes it seem like they're going somewhere else, but then also the doctor... The well, they're in Vegas, well, right? Because that's how they he joke. He makes a Vegas joke, yeah. yeah. yeah the, the somewhere movie, in the desert. This is this is where the, one of the weirdness of the cuts of this movie happens. Because there's a how, fight, dare, yeah. how dare you? Because <laughs> there's a fight scene with with Michael I- with General Katana on a uh, uh, the, oh they, they've they've left the no 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 yeah there's a fight scene with General Katana on the truck as they're trying to go to this this which place. was an added scene. Yes, because as they get the second coordinate, there's a scene of John C. McGinley and Michael Ironside. Listening, and they hear this coordinate. They're like, "Okay, we're gonna go do this." He knows the coordinate. Yeah, and then oh, well, then we'll get to fucking Sean Connery's thing afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, then wow. they go there. Then they they fight, and then it just cuts to Michael Iron's side. Like he gets knocked off the truck, and he's just back at corporate headquarters. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, "Oh, like what if like what? Where could they be?" And it's like, you know, we saw from the previous scene that you know where they are. <laughs> I know. Or like you were definitely a lot closer <laughs> to him before <laughs> than you are now. now. That's. <laughs> Hey, uh, that was... What about the scene where uh, Connor McCloud like, bends all his bones back together? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. It, that was fun. That on that, I can't believe that truck scene was added. I mean, it was like... Because the fact that um, she has to drive the truck yeah. with them just, like, wrestling over the windshield. Also, wouldn't it have been so cool if it turned out Michael Ironside got in the truck with her at the end? Because they're just two long-haired dudes yeah. in black coats. Yeah. Like, if he had been... If she's like, oh, good, the fight's over. We ran one of them over. I assume it was Michael Ironside, yeah. as I call him. Yeah, because I and guess... So that scene, uh, the desert chase scene or whatever in the car, was, like, the scene that they shut down the production during. So they didn't finish it. And so, like, four years later, they brought back those three actors and, like, filmed that scene. Oh, my God. Let's get the gang back together. Yeah. Let's get them back It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Where's it? So uh, they break into the prison. They're running out. And they end up in a death trap for all Highlanders. <laughs> a big old fan. Which I was like, yeah. this is hilarious. <laughs> and I immediately started saying, you stole fizzy lifting drinks. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then we were both like... 
just stand on your hands, I guess. And yeah, then- as long as your head doesn't get cut off. <laughs> Holy shit, yeah. Your feet can get cut, cut off, off, just yeah. not your head. That fan's not going to get that low. And see, I got totally swept away, and no pun intended. I was very much thinking like, wow, oh, they got him. That is a Highlander <laughs> yeah. trap if there ever was one. Yeah, same, same. Uh, and so what happens here is that... Um, Sean Connery believes in the magic inside of him. Bagpipes start to play. It plays fucking Amazing Grace. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Again, Jesus. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, and this he, is saved a wretch. Later. And he raises the fan a little bit and opens the door, I guess, and then just dies. <laughs> Well, yeah, but it kind of looks like he teleports out of the way at the last second, if you ask me. (laughs) But not before telling him this very, very important piece of information. That in order to take down the shield, it's going to take both Both of of you. you. (laughs) And that's the only way to take down the shield. Yeah. Yeah, because he would know that. Right. <laughs> I don't know what airplanes are, but ozone shields, I understand. Beams of light. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. And so they escape, and he goes, There's one place that we have to go. The first place that this movie started <laughs> yeah. the shield control pyramid. And let's show some of the exact same shots. Climb to the top of it. Uh, yes. Yeah. I guess. Because they just cut to like them fighting in front of that beam of light. Right. Again, yeah, like, the big blue beam in the sky. Yep, yeah. Yep, yep. Typical. Uh, and he, after like a fight that's kind of nothing, like he just kind of beats my yeah. katana. Yeah. He you, like, yeah. cuts his head off. Whatever. Just kind of beats him. Quickening. Like pretty quick. Yeah. And, and nothing explodes. Really. Uh, stuff does explode around, I think. Not until he walks into the blue beam of yeah, light. Okay, yeah. And then then the movie has the echo of him being like, remember, it'll take both of you. And then he just... <laughs> to have up. sex forever. Yeah. <laughs> she does nothing. nothing. She's literally won't. just on the side of the room. I'm waiting for her to, like, you know, hit Michael Ironside yeah. over the head with the a bottle. Yeah. Or shove him in there, that. sacrifice herself. <laughs> yeah. To- yeah. Nope. No. He just walks in and it blows up, and then he's like, I'm fine. It'll take at least two of you, but I wouldn't mind watching the three of you. <laughs> Water, please. <laughs> Water's all around. <laughs> take a walk. There is a. When Michael Ironside, this is, I don't mean to like totally backtrack, there, when Michael Ironside and uh, Connor McLeod first meet. Uh, oh, like uh, in this world again, and there it's like at his wife's grave yeah. in the holy ground. And he says he has this line that's like it's like I always admire a man who could talk to the dead. Yeah, which also, is he kisses a statue on the mouth. <laughs> yeah, like right after saying that, <laughs> and then yeah. and then they get into their golden rule. The high. Oh, this is back to the religious thing too. Yeah. He says we have a golden rule, like you said about don't forget the golden rule. Different. They would just don't fight on holy ground, as you mentioned, but as if like. Like the golden rule doesn't exist across all planes. Yeah, and then like a <laughs> right. priest walks by holding a giant cross with like a bunch of altar boys, right? Yeah. yeah. Can yeah. I imagine yeah. that? Yeah. No, that happens. <laughs> But it looks like they're in like a mall. Like I don't even understand what this room is. There, much like the pyramid. I, I, that's why it's yeah. very surprising to me to, to think that like an edit was what was going to save this <laughs> yeah. movie. Where it's like, no, no, no. <laughs> Give it back to me, and I'll show you. It's what probably I better than the original <laughs> version. I do want to get back to the immortal life of uh, of McLeod here. Of when he's describing to Virginia Madsen. It's like, oh, that was my first wife. And then he describes the girl from the last movie as his last wife. And there's there's no talk of what happened in between. That's true. <laughs> that was there a great is, scene. There, there is there's there, at least 400 years. Yeah. I don't think he was just chilling. And he was, was on a boat. He was on a boat. He was on a boat. <laughs> he was a pirate captain. <laughs> He was in World oh. War II. Yeah. Oh, that's and his, blo- his blood-flecked journal from as captain yeah. of this boat, where he also says something like, I died again, and then everybody else died or something. I think I wrote it he down. He was like, the cheeseburgers on the boat weren't very good. <laughs> Too many hot dogs, He's also dude. like on the first ever football team. Let's go, yeah, dude. Oh, yeah, yeah. Leatherheads. Oh. No. He talks about coming back. I came back from the dead again. But it's like, I just didn't know, like, do they? They don't die and come back. He just no. didn't die. It's yeah, not like he got they, scurvy. They, like, if got... they pass out, they have to like heal, or if they get stabbed in the heart, they have to. There's like a downtime. We okay. saw in the first. Yeah, movie. so maybe they go black for a second. But yeah. like, but Ramirez taught him how it all worked before that. 
Yeah. That's true. This yeah. is 1853. Right. Why is he even using a boat? He can breathe on water. Yeah. <laughs> oh, also, when Ramirez... He likes the companionship? Yeah. Yeah. When Ramirez That's what he called it. His him... name was Bo's the companionship. Sorry. <laughs> Ramirez came to him in the 1500s, and he did not call out his name then. So I don't know how or why he got there. And then Ramirez wasn't like... Oh my god, it's so good to see you again, even though you don't remember me or not. like. There's no. I mean, mention the the of only that. thing that carries over from the first movie is all the women he banged. Pretty yeah, much. <laughs> like nothing and else. He, he was to make the point where he's like, "Well, I guess he doesn't carry a grudge for the lie that made it so that dude raped his wife." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said that too. Uh, None yeah. of that happened. <laughs> Remember that time I uh, lied about your wife and then she got raped by Clancy Brown, and then she what? never told you. Yeah. Oh well. Eh. Oh man. It's okay, man. I forgive you. <laughs> yeah, they get together. Anyway, more about airline food. This yeah. high five. <laughs> yeah. To magic. Magic what? <laughs> <laughs> they cheers to magic. Magic what? And I just... He I'm asked it like as a ma- question. <laughs> magic works. Magic works, I guess. <laughs> sure. sure. Fuck it. That was, the, that was, was that a, from the movie or was that from the writer's room of this yeah. movie? <laughs> <laughs> that, was him, that was him and his agents. That wasn't even Connor McLeod. That was just Sean Connery and his agents. Like $3 million. <laughs> <laughs> Magic box. They're going to give you new riding boots out yeah. of this thing, too. Go get it. Uh, one, one more thing. He, oh, yeah, he got to keep the suit. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But he only wore in one yeah. scene, right? I don't think yeah. that was what he's wearing to his... I think he when wears they... it all the way up until they change clothes to like go into the, the car. To okay. The he wears it when they yeah. fight in front of his Coke bottle sculpture. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's comment on art. Yeah. Uh, since we're at the end of the film, one other thing yeah. that I want to mention that I don't know you guys might have seen in the uh, in the Wikipedia, but I also need to show you later because it's okay. so great. In uh, one of the cuts of the film, like in the I guess in like the UK theatrical version, not mm-hmm. the one that was in the US, there's a totally different ending, or there's an extended ending, like mm-hmm. basically where we saw it's longer. Yeah, where we saw <laughs> it just kind of fades to black, and sure. Sean Connery says something. Now, in the what they originally shot, I guess, is what's called the fairy tale ending. Okay. And I had not read this, but I was watching the deleted scenes on the Blu-ray, and they're just going on random scenes. And then this happens, and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> there's a scene where all of a sudden, you know, it's just a string of deleted scenes. And then all of a sudden, there's a scene of Virginia Madsen out at the dam, and she's looking up. And she's like, I can't. I just can't. And I'm like, what's happening? And then it cuts to, you know, uh, I don't know. Christopher Lambert. Yeah. In a blue screen, floating in the air. And he's like, (laughs) come with me. Come with me. Like he's floating off to the other planet or something. Okay. And they have this whole exchange, like, you have to come. And she's like, I just can. And then she flies up into the sky with him. (laughs) And then they have like a Dragonheart moment where they kiss. And then they kind of like turn into stars and shoot around in space and to the stars. <laughs> yeah. And that's the end of the movie in the fairy tale. Holy oh God. God. But I'm gonna show you guys this later because if you can look at if you, if listeners, if you can look it up on YouTube, probably you can. It is too funny. You gotta watch it. Thank <laughs> God. Come that. with me. It's amazing. We got cheeseburgers. Oh, they have all you can eat restaurants just like we like to eat all the time. They have Wendy's on Planet Fox. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Thomas is one of us too. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <There's>, I, <laughs> he hasn't killed everyone in a very long time. That's why he looks like shit. <laughs> I was very confused in the very beginning of this movie because during that flashback scene, they're sometimes using swords, but then you see a couple shots of him holding like a machine gun. <laughs> yeah, no, they have guns. It's <laughs> ancient, <laughs> ancient Earth. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. See, this I mean, movie's fucked. That, that's the kind of that's the kind of stuff where I'm I'm on board for it. Like yeah. I read en- like there's enough like awesome comics out there that do that like prehistory tech or like you uh-huh. know al- you know that kind of uh, whatever ancient, you, aliens. ancient alien yeah. stuff yeah. very like very well in yeah. a way that you're like fuck yeah yeah but like <laughs> this. Just doesn't like yeah. there's ne- every every point where you're like okay okay cool cool I'm here like even for like the Batmaniness of the beginning we're yeah. all like yeah all right mm-hmm. uh-huh. sweet what are you gonna do yeah bring these cackling <laughs> twins of real life flotsam and jetsam <laughs> yeah. out onto the uh, stage here we'll watch them and that sucks everything about it sucks <laughs> it all sucks it's crazy it's like oh there's like we're in leather we're on a desert planet we have machine guns but forget yeah. about all that. 
Those floaty How's boots it? you put on even expand to look like bat wings. Yeah. It's like, it looked straight out of Now bat. let's cut to an old man in a leaky theater. <laughs> <laughs> okay, pretty girl. <laughs> pretty girl. He's said that eight trillion times over the last <laughs> six hundred years. Every time he sees a redhead, get her for me. <laughs> she looks like my third wife. <laughs> oh, man. That was my last wife. <laughs> she died just twenty nine years, years ago. ago. And he's, she's like, and so do you think it's because like, he hard forgot the umbrella? <laughs> like, I want to know the circumstances of her horrible so- solar radiation exposure. Yeah, he was. Uh, yeah, I don't know. He was fine at this point. That he must have been mortal. Right? Yeah, he was so mortal. He was protected by those big pants. Uh. <laughs> well, Tyler, you want to? Uh, oh boy, I don't know. Wrap if I have it up one. and do a rating. Um, to magic, magic works. <laughs> Magic works. <laughs> How many bagpipe infused renditions of the William Tell Overture would you give Highlander 2 The Quickening? Uh, I'm going to go with two. I'm going to give it two. I give the last two one three. Tells? Yeah, two, two bagpipe two, two tells. Two William Tell <laughs> Scottish Overtures. Um, <clears throat> this movie's real bad. Um, yeah. I almost wanted to just give it the same as the first movie because mm-hmm. there, are, there are, are some cool scenes. Uh, there's like tiny hints of like cool tech that they did or fun stunts that they pulled off, like the elevator thing where they built an elevator. He could actually stand on. Sure. (laughs) Um, this movie also, uh, really wants you to understand how elevators work. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. But I just, uh, part of me is like, you can't, you can't fake this insanity, man. Yeah. It's so crazy. Uh, I was here cackling during the fucking subway scene and the airplane safety video. And I get, I get a kick out of that. When I'm just laughing by myself, watching the insane movie. But still, yeah. two stars, because it sucks. Two William Tells. William Tell overtures, sorry. Bagpipe confused. confused. Bagpipe, yeah. Get the rating right. I can I can feel the bagpipes <laughs> floating over me. <laughs> Who's next? Oh, man. Um, yeah, I've played William Tell overture many times, but never with bagpipes uh, infused in. So I will give this movie one rendition of William <laughs> Tell with bagpipes. It was really bad. Like, and I think the what I was saying before um, in the first movie, one thing that actually I thought did work was his second or last, or no, yeah, his first wife. Um, mm-hmm. That whole relationship, like, actually, like, seemed to be believable and was actually like a nice sort of thing. And th- this, there's none of that with like how chick. he invented photography to capture her. Beauty. Yeah. Or, <laughs> you know how he stayed with her all the way until she died. Like as you know, yeah, I, uh, yeah but, um, also I missed queen. There's a part of this there movie is where he, one queen song. There is it's the kind of magic. There's a part of this movie where he says, I stayed with her until she got old and I stayed with her. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah he she, says, he like, I still metal. loved her. Yeah. 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 Like, can you believe it? He and, said, well, no, he, he didn't act like that in the first yeah, movie. Yeah. So, yeah. Said, I think he says, like, I still loved her, and she was old or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> I think Somehow, yeah. Memory is still fallible, even for the 500-year-old immortals among us. Yeah. Who's to say? We only have his side of the story sure. anyway. True. Uh, guys, I think I'm going to give this four. Oh! I've used William Tell what? Not because it's a better movie, but I had a better time watching yeah. it. Yeah. No. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. It was fun. <laughs> I had fun. It's just because it's it was so it was so bad. It's good fun to totally. watch. Yeah, I, what's a perfect score? Uh, that'd be it. That, I mean, it, the <laughs> scale is completely irrelevant. So, how many William tells? Mm. Oh, I mean, probably just two. Also, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? yeah, it was a. It was like the idea that it was the worst movie ever. Well, I guess we're watching like the, the best version cut, yeah. of it. <laughs> yeah. We're like that. That fairy tale ending sounds psychotic. Like I can't imagine like doing anything other than just be, like uh, like if you were like literally just like, been in a theater and actually just had the need to be like, what is happening? And say it out loud. It is like that would have unquestionably been the reaction from everyone in the room at uh-huh. every single screening of it and the fact that it then got made into a tv show after there's that, another movie after this there's more movies yeah there's three more movies three <laughs> yeah we're only on movie two of I five 
Oh, boy. Uh, the look of pity that just went across your face. <laughs> like, I'm not on the hook for anyone. Is it William telling two of those, please? I, there's no. Uh, yeah, there's, that is uh, unfortunate. Coming back next week with Josh again. I can't wait. I can't wait. Whoever's getting the series, though, that's going to be the most fun. Yeah. You guys will watch, yeah. I don't know, probably a half season of. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Duncan. Season that was the, the first Highlander thing I ever watched. We accidentally borrowed a VHS from the library oh. that turned out to be the Highlander TV series. And remember just like turning it on and being what is this it said like <laughs> guest starring at the top we just knew immediately there'd be no blood and it was really sad and just felt like <laughs> the total waste i didn't watch highlander until i don't know probably 10 years ago and then <laughs> this one uh yesterday yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. this movie exists yeah do we even talk about like i i i, I this was a big point to me. It was like they were talking about we're getting the weak point of the shield and it's like oh is it going to be a rocket are they going to fly there it was just a fucking ladder yeah, it was a ladder. Yeah, it was yeah. just a fucking ladder. The space, it, didn't it seem like it'd be more like the space between, like, the space between? <laughs> it'd be like more of the, like, uh, it'd be more of, like, just uh, kind of like an error in the glitch in the code kind of thing. Not yeah. like, oh, this is an access ladder. Yeah, it's just yeah. like, a, it's a fucking ladder. Like, and then they go, and they go, they get up to the top of there and it's just like, yeah, there's air, and they just go right back down. And it kind of, like, we're going to go back to the dam now. I guess, it made like, no we sense. Cr- we climb and the not ladder. like, Cautiously removing their straw hats or something else, <laughs> yeah. it was just like, no, let's just go, let's it's, go up. What's the worst like, that could happen if we haven't had access he, to sunlight? You think he would have been, you been like, after losing his first, his other, his last wife? I'm sorry, be like, you stay down here. I want to make sure it's no, safe. It's the, the Prometheus uh, yeah. thing. We're like, eh, forget the helmets, <laughs> yeah. breathe it in. You know, like. yeah. I mean, I guess he, if he had stopped any of the laser beams, it would have stopped the shield. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, I don't know. Stupid. Anyway. Also, if the ozone layer was gone, it probably wouldn't have been gone over like a big mountainous, undeveloped area. Right. Mm. Well, there's. I, I, I meant to rant about that. There was just too many things. <laughs> too many rants. Uh, I think that's the end of Highlander Two: The Quickening. I uh, yeah. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask what the uh, environmental message we're supposed to say, <laughs> oh, is, but God. I'll hold that question for <laughs> the comments. The environmental message is if we just wait 25 years under a dome, yeah. we'll be totally fine. Okay. <laughs> we can I take the it. dome away. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, let's get on the ship from Wally. At least yeah. then we can <laughs> yeah. cupcake in a cup. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. That sounds what's, sounds the, good. what's the next movie called? Well, next movie is. Not what we're doing next week. We're actually oh. taking a detour. Oh, that's right. A little detour for something special. Down Sean Connery Avenue, but not quite. Yeah. <laughs> Would you say we're going to the stars? <laughs> we're going <laughs> to the, the stars. stars. Uh, this, uh, you know, actually this week, a brand new Dragonheart has come out. <gasps> on Blu-ray. DVD. I am the last one. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so we're uh, Sean Connery adjacent here. Yes. Uh, Dragonheart Vengeance is the new <laughs> film in the series, uh, and it is going to be great. We're, we, you know, any time that one of our uh, series that we've talked about here on the podcast comes out with a new uh, episode, our new film in the series, we got to we make a new episode. We make a new episode, exactly. That's what I, I can't wait to, to hear that song again. Oh man, it's so good. You'll, you'll hear yeah. it next weekend at the Oscars. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. yeah the death montage. I also seem to hear it every time I go to California Adventure. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Um. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty excited about that. The dragon is voiced by Helena Bonham Carter this time. HBC. Ooh, Ooh a lady dragon. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah. Ooh, exciting. Um. So yeah, we'll be talking about Dragonheart Vengeance before we jump back into Highlander. After that, mm-hmm. so tune in next week for that. In the meantime, Josh, thanks you. Thank you for being here, man. Thank you so much. It for was having me. So much fun to have you on. And everybody else, if you can rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, tell us about the secret ending of Highlander 2, The Quickening, that I'm sure exists that you think should happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how do you pitch, think it should have Yeah, pitch your ending uh, in the comments, and we'll talk about it on the next episode. Should someone had say, said the word quickening in the movie once? <laughs> and uh, Josh brings up a good point. We still need to know, like, which... Uh, TV episodes we should watch, if any. So yes. please email us uh, at sequelrights at gmail.com or check us out on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at sequelrights. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> what have you done to us? Um, anyways, uh, until next time, we'll uh, see you guys and uh, yeah. S-E-Q-U-E-L-S